back in and things starting to do. Normal. And then it started all over again. And then, I mean, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I kind of settled in and then uh -huh. it started over again. <laughs> You know, it's the way it goes. Good, it's fine. Good. Cool. So, and we just hired a director of operations. So he he starts November first. He's actually here with us. Nice. But he starts November first. So that'll be good. It'll give Jeff some time and margin. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll actually make things easier. Mm-hmm. Remind me how many people you have on staff now. Uh, including him, fifteen. But okay. Some, like five of us are part time. Okay. Actually, more than that. It's about. I think there's seven full time. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, that's I a lot. The rest are part timers. Okay. So yeah. My name's Becky Willie. Counseling. Becky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's about right. five. Okay, with Bill. Yeah, because Nicole yeah. were in admin. Uh, uh, my husband is a basketball player. Receptionist. Okay. 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 But it works out well, actually. Yeah. There is some flexibility with that. It's 11. Did you notice there were a lot of people in the... I know, that's what I was afraid. I didn't really want to start too early since session didn't get out quite a way, just to get in the bathroom and out for ladies. <laughs> okay, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, thanks. Yeah. This is in the front row. This is my husband. He's coming here for moral support. <laughs> Cheerleader, yeah. Like tech support. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Cammie. Hi, Cammie. Uh -huh. I'm Veronica. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from the church. Are you? Yes. Fantastic. Um, I'm from Coram Deo. So that is in Davenport, Iowa. So Rob who's the board chair, Rob yes. Willie. He's our oh, senior pastor. Oh, yeah, 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 wow. yeah. Okay. How are you liking your yeah, you know, I Oh, I love it. Um, it's great weather. Yes, I know. That's what your greeters were like. We made great weather for you. And we're like, yes, we're not, thank you. Yeah, because then when you all leave next week, it's supposed to drop. Is it? Is it? Well, somebody at home, our kids were like, it's 80 degrees at home. And I was like, whoa. I mean, I'm good with this right about now. 70s. Yes. I'm not ready for snow before Halloween. No, no. <laughs> so what do you do here? I work um, alongside our Hope Institute. So I do all the back end stuff. Okay. So explain what the Hope Institute is. So the Hope Institute is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hope Institute is, uh, we have a few classes um, ranging from beginners for people like understanding what baptism is about, or membership, or knowing the yeah. um, right to people who want to get more um, doctrine, Bible doctrine, theology classes. So, uh, okay. We've been running it for the last three years. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah. There's a I bet there's a lot there, though, administratively. There <laughs> 
I just, especially since it started when COVID hit, mm -hmm. so everything was mostly online. So now uh, our encouragement is like we want people in person. Yes. So it's less work. Yeah. On the back end, but right. It's still like and come, come be a part, right? Exactly. Like be part of our community. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I do the back end stuff, and then also a bit of. Um, visitors come so like we do our um, welcome and we're teaching them what we believe in and if this is a place for you then we awesome. some membership so awesome yeah. that's very cool yes. thank you for sharing well, can we oh well <laughs> thank you <laughs> Give us all the tricks. Exactly. <laughs> I wish I had all the tricks. And Judy, are you? Do you work with um, senior pastor here? Is that no, right? No, no, executive pastor. Oh, okay, okay. Executive pastor of missions. Okay. And then our lead pastor of um, leadership and development. And that's his new title. Okay, okay, okay. Because yeah. I feel like I've seen emails because I work for Rob Willie. Who's okay. the board chair, and yes. I feel like your name has come yeah, across yeah, yeah. for some yeah, reason. And so <laughs> I like recognize your name. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. you probably have gotten email, random emails from me about who knows board calls or something. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. yeah, I know. I was making connections with some of the other ladies that I've talked to, yeah, so it's been great. So great. Yeah, yeah. It's good to know we're all around, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. I think we're good. Okay. Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, this is uh, your calling as a support staff, so this is your time to leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm just curious. Well, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Cami Biatti. Um, I am on staff at Coram Deo Bible Church, which is in Davenport, Iowa, Mississippi, runs east and west. So we're kind of right on the border between Iowa and Illinois. And I've been on staff there 11 years, but just recently came into a more significant role um, full-time here in the last couple of years. Um, so I'm just curious, who's here would consider themselves a support staff? So I want to I know my audience. <laughs> Great. And then what about pastors or pastoral staff or pastoral staff wives or Spouses, all right. Um, and then and other people who volunteer may serve in another role within your church and considered a support staff role. Awesome, great. Well, the reason I'm, I definitely like to know my audience is I have a background in journalism, so I'm always interested in who I'm talking to. So, um, and the first thing, and I really want you guys to recognize, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, our senior pastor, when he was talking to me about doing this presentation, he said, you need to tell them this. And so my big idea for you today is if there's nothing else you take away from our conversation is that your role is essential. Sometimes you just need to hear that. Um, so if there's nothing else that you take away, walk away from the fact that what we do is really important. And there's days that that can be hard, days that it can be fantastic, but he really wanted me to stress that and I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later on in my presentation. Um, so, like I said, I uh, work at Coram Deo, and I currently support three different people within our church. We have about 40 people on staff, just to give you an idea of the size of our church. I work for our senior pastor, our associate pastor, and our business director. So, needless to say, many, I'm sure many of you can say the same thing, that my days are very busy. Um, but I love it because every day is different. I have different personalities of pastors and, and bosses, and as you all have different personalities of bosses, and so it makes it really interesting. And so that's one of the things that I really like. So just to give you a kind of a perspective of where I came from, I mentioned my training was in journalism. Um, so this is me as a producer. So my job was I worked for, for 10 years in the television industry as a producer. So every day my job was to write, or to work with editors, anchors, other producers, um, directors, and to write and execute a 30-minute newscast. That was what I did every day. Loved it. Um, thought I wanted to do that for the, my entire life from the time I was in seventh grade. So I did work for about 10 years in that, and then um, God called me out of that. And so the second picture up on the left-hand side is a picture of me when I worked for a local university in the Quad Cities called Augustana College as their director of public relations. This was a picture that was taken after we had celebrated our 150th anniversary and we'd done, we did a Guinness Book of World Record attempt that we planned and executed 
um, for the longest chain of people eating, licking ice cream. So you had to stand <laughs> next to your guy or your gal and you licked your ice cream. Um, memorable, very memorable. We didn't tell them that they had to do that until they came, but it was great. <laughs> and then the third picture is um, my family, obviously. Um, and so when I, when I was thinking about the title of this message, I was, or this topic, I was just really thinking about what my calling is. And so um, they're obviously my calling too. Um, and so my husband, Sean, is actually here. And then my children, Caroline, William, and Thomas. And so I definitely would say that has been a huge blessing for me and a calling in my life. But as you know, if you have children or you're married, it's hard work. And there's days I'd rather just go to the office. <laughs> um, so I obviously was like, I'm very much a word person, obviously, um, because of my background. So when I was thinking about, okay, what is calling me? How, you know, if somebody says what you're calling, what does that mean? So of course I went to the Webster's Dictionary to look it up. And um, Webster's Dictionary is very specific where it defines the vocation or profession in which one customarily engages pretty singular. It doesn't really have a lot of de depth to it. And it really just focuses really pretty much on your job. But if you look at the biblical viewpoint, um, biblical calling, which I have up there, it's a, it's a vocation that fulfills the purpose of bringing good to others and the glory to God. So your job, your role as a neighbor, a sister, brother, mother, father, daughter, son, husband, wife, is part of that, it's multiple. And I think it's easy for us, <clears throat> I was just kind of experiencing this personally this week, it's easy for us to compartmentalize. This is my job, this is what I do, but yet what we do is more than that. It's a calling. And um, Martin Luther in his Confession of 1528 addressed this. He argued it just wasn't those who served in the church, but also those who have a household, who's married, family, parenthood, childhood, labor. And so all of us, obviously, as believers, have to work, have a work that's important. And when done for ours and others' glory, or others' good, it brings glory to God. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> I have three different bosses with three different roles. So my days, um, I have to spend a lot of time organizing those. And so really, today I want to just separate and talk about two different things. Just really basic, people and tasks. And what does that look like? Um, so we're going to talk about people first. The first thing that I have found has been very helpful and um, essential is I have worked to learn my boss. So learn your boss. I'll give you some examples. When I'm writing emails for our associate pastor or our senior pastor, I like to say I'm going to put my hat on for them. Maybe you've heard that. How would they say that? How would they approach someone? I mean, our senior pastor uses that example a lot. You know, he might say something like, um, be gracious about this, but this is what I'd like you to say. And I really strive to make sure that the email sounds like them. Um, another example would be, what are their likes and dislikes? Um, where's my digital natives versus non-digital natives? Does this pastor want something only in email or digitally, or does he want it digitally plus printed or only printed? <laughs> you know, those types of things come into play. Um, and obviously, uh, one of the things that I would say that has been a best practice for our church is that we have task manuals that we would consider living and breathing documents, meaning that's assigned or that's given to each of us when we start our job. So we have graphic design task manuals. We have admin, associate admin um, graph, or, uh, manuals. So all the jobs that we do are constantly documented. So if something were to happen, any one of us could pick that up at any point. And that has been really helpful because there were a lot of things from a memory perspective. I think that's another thing. If you've got new support staff coming in, the memory of what has happened uh, on it, to be honest, even six months ago sometimes, you have to go back to your task manual. Um, we were, I was just thinking about this, that we just went through a baptism service, 
And from the last baptism service, we'd already made some changes. And how quickly that happens, I don't think we realize how many changes that we do make on a daily basis that are not documented. So um, that has been a huge blessing to me, coming on board full time, and then also I'm hoping moving forward for others as far as what needs to be covered when I'm not there, for example. And then the last piece of that is to anticipate their needs. Um, I, I'm sure many of you have weekly meetings with your pastors and directors, and I spend time thinking about what is coming up, looking at their calendar two weeks in advance, asking them about something that I know is coming, but they probably have not thought about it. And I was talking with our associate pastor about this presentation, and he said, um, <clears throat> He said to me, if my admin is not thinking for me, then I'm really scared. You know, and I thought that was a really good example because they, going back to we're essential, they depend upon us and they want us to be thinking ahead and doing those things that they don't really have time to think about. And so I, I thought I use that example just because I think that has been very effective. Also just in building the confidence around me as far as I, I know that they know that I have it. And then also bringing those things back up which will come into play with um, some of the other conversations I've had with my third boss about managing your boss. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, let's see. So. The second one is be available. I don't want, to be, don't want to appear as unavailable, whether that be for the people that you directly report to or other people that you have on staff. And so a simple example of that is that my door, or my office has a door and I do the financials, so clearly there's a piece of that that I might have to close my door for. But in general, if I'm there, I want that open because I want people to be able to feel comfortable walking through the door, whether that be other pastors and directors or support staff. And it's not uncommon for me to be asked questions that I don't know the answer to, but I figure that's a better place to be than the opposite, that they don't know who to ask, because then I know that they know that I'm available. And I think that's, that can be hard, especially when you might be overwhelmed with what you already have on your plate and being asked to do something else can be hard. And, but just taking a deep breath and being like, okay, so I'm, av I'm available and that's valuable. Um, I also ask, do I strive to understand the other personalities or generations within the office? God has created us each with different strengths and weaknesses and work sty working styles. Our support staff is made up of people who need more lead time on a project. Some have the gift of problem solving. Some are quick learners, and we need them all to, to accomplish the mission. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier as far as the concept of digital natives versus non-digital natives. I'm a non-digital native. That means I didn't walk around with a phone in my pocket from the time I was 10, five, I don't know. I don't know what the average the age is these days. But what I've realized is how important it is and how much I need them to do things that I never thought of or I didn't even know existed. On the flip side of that, we also need our non-digital natives because I have learned from others who were in that time period about things that I didn't know either. So both have been effective and I think it's easy, depending on the side that you are on, to discount the other person. So that's been something that, I've, that God has really laid upon my heart um, recently, is just that we all, have a, we all have a role, and we all have different things to bring to the table. And the last thing is, uh, be a team player. Um, this might be, seem like an easy, obvious duh, but I think it's important to really stress this, because in the, busy, the seasons of busy in, busyness, you have the, benefic um, the benefit of others around you to step in and help you. I mean. For me to be here at the conference, there are multiple people back at our church helping me, obviously. Um, I have an event happening on Saturday that I'm currently not there for. <laughs> so I think that's just a, a good reminder um, to step in into a role maybe when you, when you don't have as much, or you have more time, that you can also support them in that. 
So that has been a big part of, <coughs> excuse me, um, working through this and growing into this position that I that I've been um, holding. The other thing I talked about was tasks, or wanted to talk about was tasks, I should say. Um, Believe it or not, I am a very much a task-oriented person. I like tasks, and that kind of similar to what Dave was talking about today is that we spend all, all we we have value, or I, I really trust my value, or sometimes look at my value as how fast I can finish a project or a task. And this is a good wow. reminder of that's not who I am, but. It's always nice to have things nice and tidy, right? So one of the first things I would like to talk about is uh, work the pro process. Um, our business director recently, who's, I think I mentioned is my third boss, she told me, you love processes, Cami. And I had to think about that for a little bit. I said, yeah, I do, because there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you know if you start it, you're gonna most likely finish it. You might hit a couple bumps along the way, but in general, I thrive. And, and I would say most of us do. Like if you work the process, it works, <laughs> which is great, right? Um, if you don't have a process in place, this would be my encouragement, put one in place. Take the time to put it in place. And even if it's a short process for something small, that's okay. You can expand it, remove it, change it. And if you don't like it, Change it. Even if it's somebody who's already done it and they've, they've gone ahead of you and, and laid that process out, change it. Do what works for you. Just a personal example, I currently have two calendars going. I have a long-term calendar and I have a short-term calendar. That's my calendars. I also maintain our senior pastor's calendar. I maintain our associate pastor's calendar. So there's a lot of working stuff going on. And, but that's just my personal um, the personal way I work. I also have two working notebooks for each of my pastors and directors because inevitably they're walking in the door saying, I need this, and you're like, I don't want to put in a post-it note, I'll, I'll miss it, you know, whatever. So I'm, I'm constantly, I've got two working notebooks sitting on my desk. Now, as you can see, I'm not a digital native when it comes to that, but I'm sure there's some, <laughs> some people that would have a better suggestion. And we're going to give, I'm, I want to spend some time with you guys talking to each other and, and sharing best practices. Also, I would encourage you to think about what's your, your daily work schedule like and your whole work week. Mine is kind of separated based on my duties. So I don't know if that's how everyone works, but um, Monday, Tuesday are very financially heavy. So those are the days that I'm doing a lot of the financials that I'm assisting our business director with. Wednesday through Friday is usually the time that I have to turn towards our senior pastor, or our associate pastor's needs, and that's just kind of how my workflow works. But I've seen people separate hours in a day, like I'm gonna work with this for this time and this time. The other thing that I'm a part of is I, I maintain our database. And then that has been a challenge to try and figure out when I'm gonna add that in, because that is an important piece because if our, our data is only as good as our database, right? And we want the most up-to-date information, and sometimes that comes at various times, or people needing reports. <laughs> Where do I fit that in? So I'm still a work in progress in that part. The other thing I would encourage you to do is learn new skills. Um, ask for more training. Reach out to other support staff ideas. That's why I want you to network while you guys are in here of who you know, and you can contact them and ask. I think this has been beneficial um, for me. Um, when I came on board, I, I needed some additional um, software support, and so I asked for that. Don't be afraid to ask for that. And I think if, I hope your church's environment is, if you don't understand, they're willing to teach you, because that's how it is at Quorum. I don't know how to use this, but I really desire to use this skill. Can you teach me how to do that? What does that look like? asking for additional classes, maybe sitting down with somebody who does, who is your master. And I think that even within our staff, I have quickly figured out who on your staff knows it and spend the time to glean as much as you can from them. Uh, the other thing I mentioned was that I maintain our database. And I would say one thing that has, is very, has been uncommon for our church is that we're constantly asking for things, specifically our database, to do something that, that no one's ever thought of. 
And uh, I, I'm surprised by that, but that's a common thing I will hear uh, when I ask the company, can you do X, Y, Z? And they're like, oh, never thought of that. And you're like, really? Am I the only church that's never asked you about that? So that has been a learning curve for me of how best to navigate that. If someone's asking, I mean, obviously, one database. How many of you have one database in your, in your church that you currently use? That's impressive. Um, we regularly use two. And I, from a data perspective, that scares me just because we've got double entry going on. Think about all that time you've just lost. Um, but it's a constant battle to try and keep that stuff. And people don't tell you they moved. They don't tell you they got three emails or four, you know they've changed their cell phone. And so it's, it's, that's constant. But anyway, my point being, don't be afraid to ask for, the, for help. And specifically if you're looking for new skills. Because I think the last thing that anybody really wants is you guys to be stagnant. Because what? We're essential, right? This is such an important role in what we do. And then the last thing was work ahead. I try to work at least a month ahead, and that's probably not far enough in, honestly, um, with some of the things that we do. Some of those things are forced, like our graphic designer asks for things, both promotion as well as graphic requests, six to eight weeks out. So if, you have a, if we have an event happening, I'm thinking much further out than that. Um, so that's really important. I mean, she's kind of, because she needs those t that time, it has forced some of our deadlines out, which is good. But I think also, if you know that you're responsible for big events, start talking about them now. Start putting them on the radar. Uh, we like to say, by the time we start talking about it and we think that everybody has heard because we've heard it so much, people are finally, your church is finally realizing, oh, you're having an event. <laughs> you know, So that's a huge thing for us. So some of the, um, like I said, I talked about graphic requests and promotions. Those are six weeks out. Uh, I also want the, the space to think and execute something. I mentioned I have an event this weekend. I still don't feel like we started planning that far enough in advance because I, we didn't get the numbers that we expected for people to come as of this. And I don't know if that's it or not. It's a new event, so we'll see. Um, our church is going to be turning 20 next year. And I'm like, are we talking about that now? <laughs> yeah, that's a huge thing to be talking about ahead of time. And then, um, yeah, so I think the better off you are as far as executing things ahead of time, the better off you'll be for those last minute changes. And that's always a good place to be. So the last thing I asked all of my bosses to, to give me a couple of things that they wanted me to share with you. And so I'm just calling this notes from my bosses. So I mentioned that my senior pastor was very specific and very adamant. You tell them this is essential. So I'm just going to reiterate this again, that you are essential. Everything that, they, that you do advances their role. And we help fulfill their calling and their ministry. And so they couldn't do what um, they do without us. We also represent them, and I thought this was a really good point. When you pick up the phone call and you say, I'm calling on behalf of, that reflects on who they are. That means making sure we return phone calls, making sure we do emails. All those pieces impacts them. Our words, our actions, and our deeds matter. And that's a real tangible way. And then this was the other one. <clears throat> We can enable them to do greater ministry. So I do only what I can do. My senior pastor and my associate pastor and my business director only do what they can do. But together, we're doing more for the glory of God. And if we, that's our focus, and we're willing to, to step into those roles, and for me, stepping into those roles, sometimes we might, I feel a little unsure, but it's really important. And it's an integral part, and that's the way our church works. So an admin is an integral part of each of the ministries that we have. They're not a secretary, as my associate pastor would say. Your roles are important. 
So my business, my business director likes to use the word manage your boss. So that's number four on our list. And what she means by this is that, again, similar, you need to be thinking for your boss, thinking ahead for them, needing to ask the questions maybe that they haven't thought of, helping them flesh out events, that type of stuff. And for me, that might be reminding them about deadlines. Um, you know, the other day I was giving my associate pastor a hard time because I scheduled a meeting for him and he didn't have something already in his calendar. And I was like, it's not on your calendar. <laughs> so, and I have that relationship with him. I can joke, him about, joke about that. But I think the point is, is that we want to do everything we do. We want to give them the tools that they need to, to be successful. And that's where I find most joy is watching their success based on the planning and the execution of the things that I've done ahead of time to make it happen. And then the final thing came, comes from our associate pastor. He said embrace excellence. And we have a number of staff values, and this was the one that he specifically pointed out, so I wanted to share that with you. This one is um, offering our best with the resources we have as an act of worship to the Lord. And we view operating a church as both a church and a business. It's not separate. It's together. So he wanted me to emphasize, it doesn't mean that it's perfect, but it's with excellence. So you still have the church side, you still have the grace, and you still have the mercy that God provides in all the tasks that we do. But we do it to, we strive to do it to the best of our ability. And that's our purpose. Um, that is the end of my presentation, but I wanted to ask, allow time for questions and answer questions and answers if you have them. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. You mentioned that you use two databases. Yes. I was wondering, you only use one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, currently, the way it's set up is that I'm responsible for our main database, and our children's and worships main, maintain the other system. So I am not in that database like I am in our, our main database. Um, I have currently set aside an hour on a Monday only to deal with duplicates. That's the only thing. So I really haven't tracked. It's one of those situations where somebody says they need a report. You, you, I don't, you know, you don't realize how much time you're using. But I would say for sure, right now, it's an hour a week, which is not bad, really. But you know, when you're you're dealing with thousands of records. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's an everybody's job too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you know a new phone number, please put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I love the idea that you had about creating a task manually, mm -hmm. which is something I started and never finished because I never know to what extent how detailed. Like, it, do I just do I have to spell it all out, or is it a little bit higher level? Like, these are your tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you that ours are kind of a combination. Um, I just recently took over baptism, and so I took someone else's task manual, and it was literally step by step, which then we looked at it and we went, we need to add this and this and this and this to this. Now, I do have pieces of my task manual that I would use for supporting our associate pastor and our senior pastor that is more this time of year, <laughs> you do this, ask them for this information. So it, it varies. I think it depends, and this, this is the way we look at it. If I'm gone, or like God takes me to heaven, <laughs> can someone pick up my job and do it? And again, is that history preserved? Is that helpful? Yeah. I think the hardest part is just getting started, honestly. Take a half an hour and just write down everything that's in your brain, and then you can go back. It's a living document. I, we're constantly changing. I mean, for sure, every year it gets a review, but I'm in my task manuals a lot, 
just to change stuff because things change a lot. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your advice on like separating being available to your boss, perhaps in off hours, but managing that being available and inclusive, but at the same time managing to be attentive for my wife, my mother, and sisters? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will say that this is a, this is a challenge for me because I have to put barriers in place, um, meaning that. This time to this time, I'm not available. Um, I will say that my pastors are very good with not contacting me a lot on the weekends, or um, I will say, I love my job, but I don't want to be here Sunday morning. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be working on Sunday morning. Um, one of the more practical things is I have my email on my phone, but I don't get any notifications. I don't want to know what's happening if I'm not there. Um, I think stating expectations, and I don't know where you are in the process of that, stating expectations to your boss is really important. Like, I want to be a mom and a wife from this time to this time. So if you have something that you need from me, I'd prefer, or can I take care of that in the morning? I think a lot of it is the way you ask and the expectations that are set. Um, is that helpful? Okay. It's, and it's a, it's a reminder process, I'm sure. Sure. And I think you probably have to bear that out as far as is there someone else you can pass that to if they come and start talking to you? Or you can ask them at that point, is this something I can wait to talk to you about on Monday without being um, short or I mean, I think that's part of it. I mean, I know I'll, I'll borrow a, an example from actually our, our women's ministry director. She has had to start putting her out of office on her phone when she's trying to have her Sabbath. And literally it's, I'm not available because this is my Sabbath day. So again, how do you say that gently? Or can you say, this is the person you should go to because I'm, I'm not working today in a nice way, which is hard. I know, <laughs> especially when people know who you are. <laughs> what I have found that helps in that too is asking them, when's a good time for you this week to talk about that? Mm -hmm. Just like redirecting it to let's plan a different time. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Just going off that comment too, like working Monday to Friday, and then I want to serve on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Just to do a, a good balance of that, like what? Yeah, yeah. Does anybody want to pipe in? How do you serve and work at the church? <laughs> Too much. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. They are. Well, yeah. Yeah, um, I currently serve um, as a counselor, and then we also have been serving in children's um, a couple of times a, a month. And what I like about that is I'm not serving in any of the ministries that I'm directly serving in either. So it's almost kind of the opposite of you. I don't step into any of those. Now, I also do men's ministry, and they won't let me in. So. <laughs> 
I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's helpful. Um, but if you don't have that choice, obviously, um, I think I'm, I'm, I try to remove myself from those situations, I think, is probably the best. And I think, honestly, while we all need, our churches all need volunteers, I think you also have to recognize that what you're doing, even though you're working at the church, is part of your ministry. So the expectation that you're serving alongside of all of your volunteers or serving every Sunday should not be an expectation. And maybe that's a conversation you have with your boss. Like, here's what I'm feeling. I love the church, but I need a break. And so I'm not going to serve in this ministry or I'm going to be very strategic about what I do. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, yeah. address that. No, that's great. Changing, that's great. It's been yep. like immensely helpful mm -hmm. for me because there are some Sundays where I might not get the privilege of just like mindlessly enjoying communal corporate worship mm -hmm. because I'm running around like a mad person mm -hmm. trying to get everything done. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, so. sorry. Becky, you're going to add something? I, this is kind of perspective. So my husband is can, one of Cameron's bosses. He's the senior pastor. And I will just say, this is what I was going to say this, but like you are loved. they do things well and they know how they want them done and they want you to do them the exact same way and so bless you all for, for doing that um, for sure but 
One of the things I would say, because we're almost 20 years old and you're hearing her talk about databases and 40 people on staff, well, it wasn't always that way, right? When you started, we had a part-time worship leader and one pastor, and not even a, an admin. Uh, we had volunteer admin. But that said, one of the mindsets that we had from the beginning, and I think this is important, is we tried to operate like a big church even though we were a small church. Mm -hmm. With that mentality of, in a small church, everybody knows everybody and you can just, you can do it because you know, there's not as many jobs, and so you can do everything, but the bottom line is if you do everything, then you're not raising up others to do it. And so I think just operating and talking with your staff and just, like, this is how we're doing it, and if somebody doesn't step up to the plate, then it doesn't get done. And they say, well, like, why, why is it not done? You're like, well, we're just not there yet. We don't have those people. And people won't step in unless you step out a little bit. And at the same time, you have to have it done. Yeah. But I think just operate on boundaries, mm -hmm. and we're going to do it this way, and eventually there's going to be more people love the idea of systems and we're going to do it this way and I'm sorry I, mean, I remember on Mondays my husband never talked to anybody on Mondays and our staff knows that Rob doesn't ever talk to anybody until 1230 I mean I don't care if you're on fire like <laughs> but that's always been the case and it started even when he was the only guy I mean and people were calling with emergencies and it's like sorry I'm just doing you know so you have to kind of I love the idea of systems you start them when you're little and it will produce more fruit even though it's hard There's a comment in the back or with like a list of all the things that like the church could need, like someone to do gardening, someone, you know, are you an AV person, are you this, are you that, and we emailed it to the whole church, and then we got a list back, and we discovered that there were people in the congregation that we didn't know had certain skill sets, that mm -hmm. then we can approach them one-on-one, -on -one, like she was saying too, but then we kind of get an idea of like, who can do certain things, and where are everybody's strengths. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I didn't mention this, um, but we do have a volunteer app that basically says, I want to serve in each of these areas. Or, I'm sorry, not an app, but it's application, but it's on our website. And so that is one thing that we do. If somebody even just says, I want to volunteer, and they don't know where, we send that to them. And then there's an opportunity for ministries to follow up. And so 
that has been um, a huge help, but I would agree, I would, me would say the same thing. A personal call sometimes makes a difference. Actually, we were just reminiscing about when Sean and I first were asked to be a part of, um, our, well, at that point, what, how long was, yeah. It, yeah, um, and basically one of the other pastors was like, and we were, not we were not married, we were engaged maybe. He said, I think you guys would make great, and he just like, basically we just, he just plopped us into a, <laughs> what we called books and things at the time, but you know, so it was a long time ago, yeah. Yep. Um, and, you know, whatever needs to be done, mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've learned is that, like you said, the face-to-face -face with people is the best way to get people to reach out. But I found that a lot of people were just intimidated because they didn't know what was expected in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And so we started doing, like, just 15, 20 minutes after the church service, because you're the just catch them and say, come downstairs. I say, come down to children's ministry. I'll give a quick overview of what the expectations are for being a teacher, for being a helper, for whatever um, – whatever task or whatever ministry, I'll give you a muffin, you can have a coffee, we'll talk about it. And I found that a lot of people, because they would say, oh, be a helper is not that hard. I thought I had to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, no, it's not. Or, you know, like take them into the production booth and say, you know, here, this is basically what I need you to do. We'll start you off just doing slides. We'll start you off doing this. And when they start to see that the tasks are not this made up thing in their head, and they actually see what the actual expectation is, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, I could try that for a few weeks, or and so I just found like actually taking them through the expectations or what the job really was really helped to get them to actually like give us some kind of commitment to that. And we just went from <clears throat> two services to three, mm -hmm. so we had to get a whole bunch more volunteers. So we had shadowing yeah. where yeah. we're like, hey, just come alongside, mm -hmm. just you know, just be in the child care room and see what it's like. Because it's the same thing, it's intimidating. Yeah, if you don't know what you're committing to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Question, guys, don't underestimate the power of prayer. Uh, the power of the one who hears prayers, actually. <laughs> it's not our power of prayer, but it's the one who hears prayers. Mm -hmm. I, I can totally identify since it's part of the first time. But I remember the early days, and yes, you don't get much. And I, we have translation at our church because it's a multi ethnic church, so I, trans I would translate every Sunday for years. And I was praying, Lord, I need more translators. time mentally trying to convey what you're saying to the people that you've brought up and um, it's still okay to translate them because the speaker doesn't look so you know <laughs> so, um, yeah but don't underestimate like the power of the one who hears our prayers it's like be faithful and know it's a season uh, but also pray intentionally like specifically Lord I need someone for this I need someone for this I need someone for this and bring it back to the Lord bring it back to the Lord um, and he will do it mm. amen well, I know I think some there might be some people who need to head out. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to leave you with is if you wanted to sit around and have a conversation, maybe there's somebody here you want to connect with and maybe um, resource. So I just was, I left you the information, the handout, but then also I just had written down a couple of questions just to get you thinking. What's one thing that you took away from today that you can share with someone near you or ask for help with? Um, I think what you guys provided was fantastic. And then also, what's an area you need help with? And who can you excuse me, collaborate with? Um, I would be happy to help. I'm sure there are many people in this room who would be happy to help and reach out. Um, obviously, Quorum is at a much <coughs> further growth than some of the churches here, but I'm sure I can find somebody, because we've got great people on our staff who've been there a long time, who might be like, oh yeah, this is what we did early on. Or I can tell you what it looks like when I'm operating with 40 people on staff. So thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>
myself. Yeah. I'm Audrey. I work for Doxa in Rockland. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, executive assistant. So we've exchanged emails. E I believe. Have we? I yes. So. Yes, I because I send out the board board stuff. Oh, hilarious. The, yes. I've at okay. least seen emails from you. Yes, yes. And so yes. I want to introduce myself. Yes. Say hello. Yes. Um, I, we use, do you use Planning Center? 